Welcome back. Part 3. Consciousness and Determinism Do we really have free will? What colour do you see? Both the human and the robot respond blue. The robot is aware of colour and has a detailed knowledge of all aspects of the colour blue. The human is aware of the colour, but also has a conscious experience of the colour blue. The human and the robot might function identically. Both are aware of their internal and external environment. But only the human has a subjective feeling, conscious experience, of being aware. Scientists are gradually understanding how our brains process information in real time. For example, identifying the colour blue. This is the process of awareness of our external and internal environment. What scientists cannot explain, the so-called hard problem, is why we are conscious. For example, our subjective experience of the blue shape. We could replace seeing colour with feeling pain. The human feels pain. The robot is aware of the hit, but does not feel any pain. Consciousness cannot yet be explained by science. As René Descartes says, I think, therefore I am. Determinism. This view says that each state of the physical universe follows from the previous state according to a set of laws. Since our brain states are physical, each state is derived from the previous one. Scientists understand some of these laws. Others are yet to be discovered. For example, the laws behind quantum effects that appear to be random. Determinism implies that the fate of the universe, in every detail, was determined from the time of the Big Bang. If determinism is true, we are conscious observers of ourselves and the world, both progressing along a single, inevitable path. Determinism may appear cold, but it doesn't make us any less human, any less feeling. Would you like tea or coffee? Why did you make that choice? If you like tea, why do you like it? Is it refreshing, hydrating, warming? Why do you desire these right now? If you like coffee, is it because of the kick, the taste, the smell? Are you addicted? How do we make choices? By the way we feel, by reason, by habit, by our circumstances, by rolling a dice, by social interaction, etc. But where do our intentions, our desires, or our original ideas come from? We are largely unaware of what is going on inside our brains, and yet we feel as though we are in control and have free will. We observe ourselves making decisions, but often don't know why we make them. Some philosophers think that we do not have free will, because everything, including our brain states, are determined by the past. Others think that we have free will in certain circumstances. For example, voting for a political party, even though we run on automatic most of the time.
Let's end this session with a clip from the pilot episode of Lucky Louie, which was never aired. The sign hasn't come up yet. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because the sun comes up later. <laughs> Why? <laughs> well, the Earth goes around, and when it turns a certain amount, the sun shows on the horizon. Why? <laughs> I don't know. Why? Why don't you know, Papa? Because I didn't pay attention in school, okay? I didn't listen in class. Why? Because I was high all the time. <laughs> I smoke too much pot. <laughs> Why? I didn't think it would matter. Why? I just figured my life would come together on its own. But then I met your mom, and you came along. So now I work at the muffler shop. Why? Well, it's too late for me to pursue a career now, and since your mom has a job with benefits, I stay home and I take care of you, because what I make is pretty much just a joke. Why? Well, the surface economy replaced manufacturing. There's no real jobs in America anymore. Why? We had good jobs for a while, but uh, it's just because we were lucky, and now we're unlucky. Why? It's just the way it goes. Why? Because God is dead and we're alone. <laughs> okay. This session and the next one are largely based on the book The Believing Brain. David Chalmers' book on consciousness is very complex, but has some chapters written for the general public. And Sam Harris's little book on free will is a quick read. It also shows how easy it is to latch on to a research finding that later proves to be wrong. Our next session is on human bias, demonstrating the need for a sceptical approach to life. This book is written by the Christian apologist Sharon Dirks. I have written a review and uploaded it to the website. Try the quiz that follows. There are also some issues for discussion.